Okay, I want to talk about private variables inside of JavaScript. Now, JavaScript does not have any modifiers for public, private, protected, like you'd have in Java or C Sharp or other programming languages. But it is still possible to create variables that you can't access from outside of an object or outside of a function. Um, so just to explain the problem, I'm going to go back to some code that I had from a previous video on object methods. And in this video, we were talking about getters and setters. We had an object right here where we defined inside the object there was a property called underscore prop1, which had the value 1979. We built two functions, a get and a set, and we called them prop1. They were accessing the value of underscore prop1, so they could set the value or return the value. So down here, when we were changing the value, we were internally changing the value of this, which is great. So we could get the value, set the value, and then get the value again, and we could see that it had changed. The problem was that the original one, underscore prop one, was still accessible. We could still get to that value, and anybody could get to this property inside this object. There was no way that we could hide that. So that's the problem that we're dealing with here. We want to create variables that are hidden from public view. All right, so the solution is to wrap the variable that we want to hide inside of a function. So I'm going to create my object, and it's going to point to a function. All right, now this function is going to return an object this is where we're going to have the public properties and up here is where we're going to have the private ones. So any variables that we declare here outside the return statement, these are basically private. They're local variables. They're block scoped, they're local scoped, they're only inside the function so nobody else can see them. So we will create our prop1 variable here and we'll give it a value. Let's pick the movie Starman. So this is the string stored inside this variable, and this variable exists only inside this function. When this function is run, it's going to return an object. Now, I want to have this run immediately and be stored inside here without me having to call it later on, so I'm going to turn this into an iffy, an immediately invoked function expression. So that's an IIFE immediately, and I have a uh, a video about this as well. Immediately invoked function expression. So I will put a link to this video down in the comments for you guys. All right, we have this hidden property. We have a function that will run immediately and return its results into here. So this object that we're returning is going to be put inside of this variable obj. Now inside of here, we could create another property. Let's say prop2 is equal to 1981. And then we're going to create getters and setters. We're going to create another property called prop1. And we're going to create a get and set for prop1. For get, we want to retrieve the value of our private variable here. So we're going to return underscore prop1. For our set prop1, we're going to accept some sort of value, and we are going to say that underscore prop1 equals the value that we passed in. Okay, that's it. We have now created a private variable, and this is the public-facing version of that, the public-facing access to this variable. So how does this work? Well, we have return here. This object is inside of this function. So this variable, although it does not exist inside this object, what JavaScript is going to do is it's going to look outside the block scope of this object and say, oh, you know what? There is a variable called underscore prop1 here. So that's the one that I'm going to use. Same thing for the set. It's going to look to this and say, that's the one that I'm going to use. So we've created, effectively, we've created a closure that's going to give us access to this. 
Now, just to test this and make sure that this is working for us, we'll do a for in loop, and we'll loop through everything inside of obj. Console.log, and we'll write out all the properties that are inside there. So this will show us all the innumerable properties inside of this object, and it should give us prop2 and prop1. So let's take a look. We'll use node to run private.js. There we go. Prop2, prop1. Inside this object, that's what we have. We have a prop2, which was 1981, and we have a prop1 that has getter and setter methods. Great. So that worked. Now let's um, try to access the values directly. Console.log of obj.prop2. That should give us the value 1981. And if we do console.log obj.prop1, that should retrieve the value here, because we're calling the get method, which is going to return prop1. So starman should be coming out for us. We'll test that. Great, 1981, starman, just as we were predicting. Now I can change the value of prop1. So let's say obj.prop1 equals, change it to the Big Lebowski. Another great movie. Starring Jeff Bridges. And, uh, oh yeah, we're going to write that out again. Console.log obj.prop1. Okay, there it is. There was the old value. Here's the new value after it's been set. Now, the whole purpose of everything that we've been doing was to see that we have created a private variable. This prop1 is no longer accessible inside of here. So console.log, and I want to know if there's something called prop1, or inside of obj, if there is something called prop1. Run that. Okay. So prop1 is not defined as expected. There is no variable called that, and we will clear this off, run it again, and there is undefined. Inside of obj, there is nothing called prop1. So, we have effectively created a private variable. This variable right here is not visible through this to the outside world. What the world will see is our getter and setter name right here, this prop1. This is the public-facing one, so we could change this. We could add something like that in front of it. So when we run it, movie, Starman, movie, the Big Lebowski, we put the string appended to the actual value. Every time we set it, we're changing this value, but when we return it, we're changing this value somehow. So that's the benefit of having a getter and setter and these private variables. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, as always, please leave them in the comments.